I bet that was the excellent Brendan. <laughs> you are right. Good. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a treat to be working with Florida librarians again. Some of you will remember um, the last century when I worked for with Florida librarians all the time. Um, what we're going to do today, and this is a pretty large group, so I want to be sure that nobody's questions get unanswered. You might um, be sure and type in questions if they don't get answered orally uh, or in speech. And if we don't get to them in the allotted hour, I promise you I will get to them within the rest of the afternoon. So we can work by email if we have some backup. Um, I'm hoping that everybody was able to watch the first four of the nine videos and work through the workbook, which you see up here on the screen, uh, that matches those videos. That would be pages two through seven in the workbook. Um, and I'd like to use that as our outline for our session today. Any questions at that point? I, it's so much nicer to be in a room where I can see your faces. <laughs> I'm going to assume, however, that there are no questions. Um, first of all, I'd like to hear from all of you about these first three questions on page two, this first set of exercises, which have to do with not only why you want to market your library or why you think your library needs better marketing, whether it's usage or there's a whole segment of your population that's never heard of your library, or you think there's services that are way, way underused, or, and, so that's the why, the first why that comes to mind. And the other thing is not only your attitudes about marketing, but your secret, hidden, unconscious attitudes about marketing. Almost every time I talk to anybody in the nonprofit world, including libraries, about marketing, there's a little secret shudder that go that I can see on their face. And it has to do with worry about, is this the same as spin or hucksterism? Is this somehow not dignified or not quite true? And I want to disabuse you, of course, of that fact. But I also am hoping that you spend some time thinking about maybe talking with staff and colleagues about excavating that, um, that particular question, because I think it's really important to examine your own deeper feelings, uh, not just your thoughts about marketing. So if we could hear from any of you on those two things that are covered on this first page, uh, I'd love to hear some examples of, first of all, why? What about your library needs better marketing? And, and secondly, Sorry, in any sorry. order. Okay, and I'm done. <laughs> this is Melissa just jumping in. Um, if anybody would like to speak out loud, please raise your hand, and I'll make sure that you get muted. Also, you can type into the chat panel. So we would love to hear um, what your opinions on this are. Um, I don't even see that anybody's typing. Um, Barbara, go ahead. Oh, good. Hi, hi, Lawrence. This is Barbara uh, from Florida Gulf Coast University. So, you know, our why or my why is about underused services. We've got so many smart folks here that can provide so so many fabulous services, consultation services, reference help, and I, I think we could um, use some help with highlighting that. There are there are just a number of things that are also underused such as uh, workshops. We provide workshops for students and for faculty, and they're not as well attended as we would like to. So those are two, the um, actual assistance, reference desk, or consultation services to students and, and, and workshops. There are plenty of other things as well, but those two stand out for me the most. Great. Thanks a lot, Barbara. Um, I see uh, I see some people, other people contributing ebooks, marketing the ebook services. And the perception that the library is just about books. So that's an overall um, overall messaging question as well as a little more attention to the makerspace and other programs. And Annette says, uh, I'm at a historical center that is associated with libraries and we want more awareness in and relevance to the community. 
of your of your particular historical related historical services. And okay, good. Um, Regina says the difficulty is in establishing new services. Right, I see that. Uh, I'm wondering um, the difficulty is in letting once you've established something, you have the great idea. You're sitting around. You go to all the work of planning it, implementing it, and then, gee, nobody comes. Is that the kind of issue? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Regina. <laughs> yep. Okay, that's a common issue, and probably when you plan any new service, it's important to add to the planning checklist um, marketing component. Needn't be money, but it needs to be time, which is a form of money. But uh, you know, how do we how do we make sure our people know this is coming, and then once it's here, how do we make sure people know it's here? And can we come back to the question of your underlying and tacit? attitudes about what's marketing or if not your own because those of you who are more sophisticated won't have that negative feeling what about staff or colleagues anybody want to weigh in on that i'm tempted to call on one the other person i know pretty well Not sure if he's on the phone. Charlie Parker, are you there? All right. Well, I guess maybe this isn't as big an issue as I thought it was. I hope you'll uh, talk it over with people and with yourselves. To sum up on the why, it looks like your why market are all over the map, and any level of detail you'd like to type in here will be helpful. Um, first of all, new services. Secondly, underused services, things you've been doing and you just know they're valuable to a lot of people, but nobody's coming. Certain kinds of events like workshops, whether how to do, how to use the library, whether in a university or a public library, how to use a particular service. People don't come. Um, and the whole gamut. And I said one person typed, uh, wrote in, People just don't know anything we've, we have. And I know we've all had the experience of a county commissioner or a trustee saying to us, you know, you guys really ought to check out ebooks. And of course, you know, you've been doing it for three years, five years, and you're kind of frustrated by that. So there's a reason that that happens. Uh, and it's also important to use that as an opportunity. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, I've unmuted your phone if you are able to talk out loud if you've got a microphone. Sure. I have no wish to put you on the spot. I just was happy to see your familiar name. And I thought you might have something to say about that underlying uh, attitude about marketing that secretly a lot of nonprofit and librarian people think it's a little bit evil. Um, maybe a little bit evil is not a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and, and it's great having you back in Florida. If, if <laughs> All right. I shan't call on you ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank you, really. I just I won't put you on this spot. Um, Camille is saying, have we heard of this thing called library instruction? Uh, I'm guessing all the academic libraries, it, librarians in the group are going, well, sure, bibliographic instruction, library instruction, how to. Does anyone have anything to um, add to her question? Elaborate on library instruction? Okay. And Sandy is reminding us that, it, that we underestimate how much time it takes to market. Um, I'm of the opinion that it does indeed take time, but once you establish a mindset it's not as time consuming as you think. Once you automatically know that whatever you're doing, there's some kind of marketing component, whether it's word of mouth, talking it up, training the staff, talking about it with the staff, the basic things, uh, it will come naturally and it won't feel uh, as onerous as maybe it now does. But I, that's, Sandy's right, it's gotta be done and it's gotta be a routine and it has to be built into your organizational culture. We, right, and Annette, 
you and everyone else, you want to jump right into implementation. Let's have a brochure. Let's do uh, social media. Oh, I can do the website. I can do this. I can do that. And that's not necessarily the most effective approach. Is that what you're referring to, Annette? That kind of approach. Yeah, thank you. Um, that leads quite directly into page two, page three of the workbook, this section on the communicative library culture, which in my four million years in library land, I am convinced that, um, absolutely convinced that this is the absolutely necessary cornerstone foundation for any successful marketing. It's a combination of organizational culture, which isn't just good customer service. It is good customer service, but that's not all it is. It's a culture of knowledge and enthusiasm. That's really all I can say, where everyone on the staff, everyone who sees the public is excited about the services you offer to the extent that you can make this happen and really knows how to use them. One of the nightmares for many public librarians is they offer a brand new, this happens to me, I'm up here in Vermont where things aren't quite as advanced overall as they are in Florida. So people are just beginning to offer downloading audiobooks, say. And a patron hears about it, walks into the library and with their iPad or their iPhone in hand, desperately trying to work through how to make overdrive work. And it's confusing. And the staff member at the desk looks at them and says, huh, I didn't even know we had that. That's really something you'd much rather not have happen. Or you have a staff members who are equipped to say, I don't know how to do that yet, but I know we just started offering it. Let me give you to so-and-so and really walk people through. So the time spent on talking with staff, I hope you watch the videos because I think that the, uh, fine restaurant family meal before the restaurant opens example is really a good one where everybody who's going to touch a customer in any way has tasted everything on the menu and understands where it comes from and what it is and that's exactly what uh what i'm talking about here talk about it at staff meetings talk about it informally um ava yes back to part one some people think marketing's just flyers there's so much more to it and that's what we're talking about this fundamental marketing attitude where everybody's equipped to help customers and is listening and reporting back to you what the public response is to things so is anybody um did you work through these exercises and i'd love to hear any observations you have about your organizational culture and how it is for as a marketing foundation. Lawrence, we do have a comment from one. Uh, college faculty needs to create partnerships with the library. Students are developing Google quality papers. <laughs> right. And Juan, I might turn that to Juan and the whole group. Um, how would you forestall that? What would you say proactively to faculty to encourage them to encourage students to learn to use the library so the papers start getting better. I'm not saying, I don't need an answer right now, but that's something to think about. So if the faculty has high awareness of library services and you maybe the message crafting part, which we get to later in the course, um, is something along the lines of, are you getting cut and paste Google papers? We could help. Send your students to us, bring your students to us. We have these services available one-on-one, -on -one, small group, whatever, however it works. And that would work for public librarians who are targeting high school students as well. Go to, go to their teachers, talk about how you can help their performance improve. Juan, I also noticed you said, uh, you, know, you talked about a Blackboard training, which thank you for that note. So any comments or questions or opinions about this customer challenges about the customer service issue? Staff needs to know a lot and care a lot. Barbara's got her hand up. Go ahead, Barbara. So I was thinking about the, uh, the number two question about how we'd rate our staff's knowledge about programs and services. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I'll, just, I'll just own this, that I thought right off the bat, I, 
I don't know. I haven't really asked that question. I mean, I, I would think I would know this. I would what I wanted to say is, oh yeah, we know all about these things. But I have not, frankly, I don't have any evidence of, of that, that we know everything. We don't have a program in place that would make sure that everybody knows about all of our programs and services. And I think one of the easy ones for, uh, for me to say that I think we may not know a lot about is like a lot of university libraries, we've got special collections and rare materials. And I suspect um, some of our employees are not as familiar with what we have in, 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 that, in that particular area. And I suspect there are other areas too, but what that question did for me, and, and Lawrence, I appreciate that question, was um, just, just poked me in the side to say, boy, we really have some staff development work to do there. Maybe we do all know about a lot of what we have. And I suspect if you work at the front desk and on the front lines, you know a bunch of stuff. But there are lots of us that are behind the scenes that that you know get out amongst people and, and we may not have all the information we need. We have no formal way in place in our library that makes sure everybody knows stuff about what's what what our um, programs and services are. So thanks for that question. Good, and thank you. Um, I, I honestly can't say often enough that I think this is the single most important thing you can attend to to establish solid marketing. Um, even if it involves upfront time like role playing at a staff meeting, take 10 minutes and make people laugh and say, okay, you be a customer and walk in and with a question about yada da and you are the staff member and you're gonna show them how to do that. Also encouraging people to say, oh, you know, you might be interested in this or did you know? You don't wanna say that to every customer. It doesn't need to be wrote, but um, by association. Lawrence, we do have a couple other comments. Um, Ava Good. says, we need to ask faculty to allow us to address students in one of their sessions. Yeah, that's a great idea, Ava. Um, for the university and academic libraries out there, do you have a problem? Um, do you have a problem getting to faculty? A, and now I'm going back up, I lost Michelle. Uh, great customer service already, and but not a lot of time to train all staff in all things. Sometimes, um, as long as you know who the expert is on staff and there's somebody there, I'm thinking now of the details like using OverDrive, for example, that can be awkward for customers and very frustrating. Um, so a peer-to-peer -peer training, designate people, gee, you're really great at social media, somebody's having a question about this. Um, does anyone else have suggestions about Ava's particular problem? You've got a great attitude, but you just don't have the time for formal training on everything. And Lawrence, it looks like Ava had answered yes to having um, trouble at getting access to the faculty. Right, and the faculty loved it when she got to do it. And Regina says, sometimes it seems that faculty takes us for granted that students know about and use the library services. Time to disabuse them of that one. It sounds like for you academic librarians, maybe your first target market is your faculty uh, when we get to that. Train the trainers, the best way to do it. And I agree with that, Brianna, um, even informally, even if it's, hey, you're really interested in uh, audiobooks and I'm gonna designate you circulation clerk number 42 as the the informal in-house expert and be, be and you're willing to be available to others I mean don't make somebody do it request it people usually love to be asked to be the expert even if it is an informal arrangement as I say I can't say strongly enough how important this is Anything else on this general uh, general topic? Culture, attitude, knowledge, good cheer. If I don't know, that's an okay thing to say. I don't know, and I can help you, or I can find somebody who does is a better thing to say. <laughs> and Lawrence, Sandy says, who is the target um, in different public libraries? Right now, Sandy, is, or is she asking who people are currently targeting? Because I'm going to do, we'll do an exercise later uh, on choosing targets. Sandy, you want to specify a little bit? 
And Charlie says, and I hear from academic friends that working to get the library included in campus orientation makes a big difference, connects you with the students. And even if you have to, to go over and over again before you get this to happen, it, just having asked with an email one time, the dean or the whomever, isn't good enough. You have to walk in with material and a happy face and say, we can get your papers better. Uh, I personally don't know exactly what database providers are doing, Juan, um, but many, some of them do have good tutorials, some of them don't. I imagine a lot of people at BLD can point you to help there or at your MLC. And Brianna, new employee, yeah, right. Brett Bianca says, as well as new employee orientation for non academic libraries. Yes. Absolutely, and the new employee orientation is a really important, uh, important moment. Begin as you mean to go on, and even if you don't get through the whole checklist of here's where this is and that is and that is and that is and that is, communicating an attitude happens on day one, and I again think it's crucially important. I also acknowledge that for those of us like me who are extroverts and talk all the time, that's not hard. For some of us who are a little quieter and it doesn't come as naturally ourselves, it's a little more difficult to, to say naturally to people, so be cheerful and smile a lot without feeling inauthentic. And I'm not suggesting that. I am much more suggesting um, that you live a, live a culture of customer service and whatever kind of temperament you are, I hear a lot of complaints. I just know I'm not that kind of person. I hear a lot, which I recognize the challenge, but I think you can, you can communicate an attitude. Sandy hates the label databases. Okay. What's an electronic resource, for example? Right. Thinking of clear language that makes sense to people is a really good idea. And one way to do this, because we're so used to our own jargon, is to go home and ask your spouse or your mother or your kid or a friend or someone who's not a librarian and say, so we have this thing, here's what it does, here's what we call it, what would you call it? It really helps. The informal conversation about this kind of thing makes a huge difference. I, I really recommend, don't underrate that. All right, let's, let's move on to page four of the workbook. And again, this is still related to customer service, first impressions, and feelings, heart things as much as head things. When you think of yourself, when you walk into a building, a library, a museum, a department store, a mall, someone's house, you know you have different feelings in different places. That play, all the places where your library touches the public are really important. And it's the one thing we don't even notice. You go there every single day, you walk through the building, you go to your office or you sit down at the CERC desk, whatever it is you're doing, um, you don't even notice what it feels like to call the library, for example, and be put on hold or get some strange machine or into a circle. You don't know what it feels like to park, walk, come in the door, pull the heavy door open with your books, figure out where to go next. You don't know what it feels like when people hit your website. You know what it feels like when you hit the website, but you don't know how some, what somebody comes on. The first thing they want to know is the hours and probably contact information. And how hard is it to find that? Usually very hard. So I, I'm urging you to actually do, and this is fun to do with a clipboard and a few staff members walking around on a coffee break. Uh, take a serious look at the places you touch people, your interface with the public, which means walking in the door, what's that like? Including the drive up and park. Uh, answering the phone, what does that feel like when someone calls? And the website in particular, these days this is more and more important because some, a lot of people who use your library a lot might very, very rarely or never walk in the door. So it's crucially important. 
uh, to be mindful of these things and always be fluffing them up. You can bet that the for-profit world, the retail world in particular, is always monitoring this kind of thing. Always. Uh, one of the most fun things to do, it's a little hard to make it happen, but if you can do it collegially with a neighboring library or somebody across the state, trade off and go visit another library, cold, blind, as if you were a whole new person and fill in a checklist of impressions. Or ask somebody, ask some colleagues in another state even, to call your library and how does it feel? What was it like? What was the experience? Transylvania in North Carolina and Edmonton in Canada. Oh, those are two good examples of marketing plans. Sarasota, Brianna's done a lot of homework. This is good. So does anybody have any, um, I'm really interested if you did these exercises or even just thought about doing them, or what your own personal observations were on your touch points, your physical plant, your phone connection, and your website. What's it feel like to get in touch with your library? And um, Lawrence, I'm just gonna just verbalize some of this stuff so it gets caught in the recording. Um, so we've got a comment. Can you provide examples of a few public libraries who have been successful in implementing a vibrant marketing plan? And our audience has answered some of that. Transylvania in North Carolina, Edmonton in Canada, Sarasota in Florida, Toronto Public. Um, and then Juan says, how would you address the digital divide? I see elderly people struggling with memorizing the steps of using technology. Right. Um, anybody here have digital divide, or particularly people who are a little slower to pick it up, uh, how that works, what you can do about that? User guides and e-help lab, says Brianna. Um, my opinion, first of all, a couple things, Juan. Um, as an elderly person myself, who is technologically quite savvy, um, it's not always elderly people, but sometimes it's people with other kinds of challenges who have trouble. And again, this is just a minor stereotype that we all think if you're over 60, you can't possibly learn something quickly. I know you didn't mean that. I'm just pointing it out to be a little careful. Um, however, with elderly people or anyone who's having trouble with technology, sit down side by side, you, them, and whatever machine they're using. I think that works better than anything else. And walk them through it, take a deep breath, and be patient. I live with somebody who is not only computer illiterate, but computer angry, and says things like, these things have ruined the whole world and I never want to use email again. And when I sit down and try to walk him through and help with anything, even a simple thing, he says, don't go so fast, don't go so fast, you're impatient with me, you make me feel stupid. And this is somebody I'm very fond of and whom I know. So. I'm, I'm offering that as a cautionary tale about helping people use technology. So laboratories are good. People who are skilled teachers in, uh, in those kinds of labs do this very well. Also, one-on-one -on -one really is one of the best. Sandy, you're absolutely right. We all have different learning styles. And Casey, I think I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, some success with creating visual instructions by taking screenshots that patrons can take with them. That's a great idea. So you're going to hit this screen, and here's what you do with it. And here's the next one and the very next one. I just did that for someone I was teaching to do mail merge. Uh, it was important. And um, it took a long time <laughs> to catch every screen that comes up when you're doing a Microsoft Office mail merge. I didn't even realize. So it's, you learn how many steps you know how to do automatically. So can we come back to the um, library um, impressions? The, 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 what does it feel like to get in touch with your library? Has anyone done any secret shopper work or invited a friend to come and comment? Again, like the corporate culture, I think this is one of the most important uh, foundational things to do about marketing. And I 
think one of the reasons so many librarians say, oh, we do all this marketing work and nothing's taking, is it may be that a couple of the foundation blocks haven't been well built. This is one of them. Barbara, did you have your hand up? Brianna did a survey uh, to see how we're doing with patron experience with us and, and the various locations. That's good, uh, and a survey is good. Also, actually experiencing it and talking to someone is, is really good, a deeper, uh, a deeper dive than a survey, but survey is fabulously helpful. Um, Brianna, would you be willing to share your survey with this group or uh, it's that one? And Barbara, did you want to? Did you have something you wanted to say out loud? I was just going to say that that every about once a year, we we do a a process. Our webmaster does a process where she engages students and has them crawl our website, and she records them visually and and also records their audio, and um, asks them to do certain tasks. And she watches the video and listens to the audio and watches how they navigate our website and finds holes and pieces and, 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 and thinks about you know how they're doing it and how they're going at things. And that's been very valuable for us, that data each year that she gathers. And she doesn't always do the whole website every year, just pieces of it, but it's extremely valuable in trying to tweak our website so that it really meets the needs of our, our users. So that user sort of experience research is something that we try to do at least once a year. Good. Excellent, and not everybody has the resources to do that kind of you know, professionally uh, designed user uh, interface survey, but it does go with good web design. But in, I do urge even very informal and fairly frequent, if you can, um, uh, information gathering. One way to do it is when you have presenters who come from away, you have information about them, you have a sort of checklist of how you greet a presenter, probably, or what you ask them. When they arrive, say, hey, hi, uh, can you just give us a minute to tell, tell us what it was like? Did you find us okay? Um, was it easy to find the meeting room? Parking all right? At least you can get a little sense of their experience walking into the library. And Barbara, did you, you have your hand up again? I did. I just, you know, I just remembered, and probably lots of you have done this, but I remember one of our colleagues who's just retired as a library dean in South Carolina, Samantha Hastings. I remember <laughs> when she was long ago in library school, and one of her projects that she she did was she um, uh, pretended to, uh, or not pretended, but she she had someone pretend to be in a wheelchair. I mean, they sat in a wheelchair. They didn't really need one. Is what I was trying to say. And and she went with them through the library while they navigated the library as though they were a person with disabilities. And the kinds of things she learned from that, and they were able to make lots of improvements in their library. And that was one of the things I don't think we've done in our library that um, this this workshop reminded me that I'd like to try. That's a great idea, and that could be extended uh, to any number of different kinds of things. Um, take a high school student who's never walked in the door and walk, and walk with them. Um, in the wheelchair situation, uh, if you actually have patrons who are in wheelchairs, uh, it's, even, it's also possible. I mean, it doesn't have to be somebody who doesn't need a wheelchair being in a wheelchair, although that's very illuminating for that person for the rest of their lives. We do have a couple of comments. Um, Leela says, that's a great idea. Some of our presenters are first time visitors, so their impressions are fresh. Right, Sandy good. says, new directors do this walkthrough. Um, those around for a long time have old eyes. <laughs> that's exactly right. And Juan says, sometimes he goes around the campus asking students and faculty about their experience and expectations. If you're willing to listen and take constructive criticism, your audience will share. Juan, thank you for that. That's exactly the kind of proactive, informal, ongoing uh, communication with your t audience that, that is, I think, at the heart of good marketing. You're really out there genuinely wondering. 
and it's not a formal survey. It's part of you walking around. I think it's a terrific idea. Right. Well, I urge you to give this some serious thought. Um, and probably if you've listened to the videos, which I hope you have, you know how important I think this, this, this and the organizational culture elements are. Um, and on to page five, which is planning, setting your overarching goals. Um, and, uh, this, and, and doing some research. So I first want to acknowledge that this whole marketing course is a very condensed. Any one of these sections could be a whole work, workshop for a day or more. Um, and certainly market planning and market research, a large corporation will have a whole staff that does nothing but planning and a whole staff that does nothing but research. My idea here, practical marketing is kind of seat of the pants. Uh, uh, research. There's so much information available, it's not difficult. And as far as planning goes, take the time to sit down and really think about what's the point. Uh, first of all, if you're part of a university or a county system, or all libraries are part of some other larger system, if your other larger system has written goals and objectives for itself, it really pays to read those and know them and to align your library specific goals with them. So as I've urged you to do, read your comp plan for your county or your strategic plan for the university's enrollment or whatever, you know, whatever is particularly in the air right now. And if you can, reflect that language. Uh, so that's my, that's the end of that lecture part. But you can see how this would lead to a library goal and that that would lead to your marketing goal. So my example here was robust community economic development. Most counties or towns these days say that's a major goal. So what can the library do about that? Well, there are a number of different things. Everybody's different, but you can imagine then how to market that gets you directly to your audience, your message, and then the channels that you're gonna use. So I I'm interested in, um, again, this is, this is an expansion of the first question. What do you wanna market for? But did anyone work through these exercises and have some additional insights? into what are we, what are our real goals here? What do we really want to get at? So you can flop over to page six, uh, articulate two general marketing goals for your library. Did anyone do this? Or does anyone want to do it by the seat of their pants right now? So Brianna's working on branding consistency. Ah, so your look and feel is the same across every imaginable platform. That's a great exercise and an important thing to do. We talk about branding um, going forward, but as far as uh, marketing goals like uh, related to people, <laughs> usage or funding even, has anybody uh, done that work? Or questions, maybe, yeah, is it, is it difficult? Is there a reason that, that nobody's leaping in with a million ideas here? Ah, major push for the databases. Nobody's using our databases, or, and they're so incredibly valuable. And talk about blowing the Google term paper out of the water. Is anybody concerned with just plain more Use, feeling overall underused? Yes. <laughs> right. So the way to attack that isn't, we just need more use. I mean, I certainly know the feeling. But to pick where you can find that use. And a couple things. I noticed from the academic librarians earlier, one of your major target markets is the faculty. Sounds like. Faculty always need an ongoing 
marketing effort aimed directly at them. And I would recommend maybe as you work through this course, use that as an example uh, of a target market, a target audience example. Anita is concerned about reaching people she doesn't even know exist. And uh, I agree, that's really important. Um, it, I also think, take a look at who you do know exists <laughs> and see how they're using and if there's anything you could do to strengthen the inner circles first. And then look at the absolute non-users or people who are out there that you just suddenly realized uh, and see. Selective, we used to call this SDI in library school, Selective Dissemination of Information. Sandy's asking, does anyone send out articles based on learning a local leader's need? So you learned your county commission chair is really interested in um, solar energy and there's nothing happening in the county right now. Are you noticing that, sending things? University staff has been doing this uh, for a long time, actually, but um, uh, and better. Public librarians can do this and make a, get a lot of points. In fact, I'm not against saying, gee, I just learned that uh, this commissioner just want, loves to go bass fishing on the weekends and pop a little interesting bass fishing article in the email every now and then. But more broadly, the issue of finding people whom you don't know is there, as one person called it. I've lost the, the uh, feed. It's up in the feed. And Barbara says, university staff are too. We have uh, New York Times bestsellers. So even for people who are not doing scholarly research, the university library has something for them. Oh, that's great. So it's just a great place to go. Let's go to the library and see what it's got today. Did anyone do the exercise doing a data comparison? This is for public libraries primarily now, although iPads data for academic libraries can be interesting. Um, did anyone look at where you stand in relation to the rest of the state or nation on circulation, usage, web visits, whatever, all the funding? And Anita says, I'm actually trying to find ways to entice people who don't come in to come in the door. Trying. I like she emphasizes trying. And let me ask Anita a question. How do you know who they are? It's a tough question. I, I know that uh, sometimes we know there's a whole group of people in the community who never come. We don't. We have to go to where they are. Ah, good. Looking at census data and comparing it to internal data that you have from library cards. Nice. Well, do uh, do do work with some data. Get comfortable with your own your own library data, and get comfortable with defining a goal or two. Whether it's a target audience, a usage of a particular service, get comfortable with segmenting your thinking as you're doing market planning. It's going to be important. Otherwise, you just you get back in that zone of we need a flyer which is nice, but not marketing. The planning part, the segmenting, the thinking it through, doesn't take the time so much as just, just the thought and learning, to, it's a mindset. You can get there. And I really do, I do urge you to, to work through the actual um, exercises in this workbook. Lawrence, we've got a question. Do you think libraries can participate in the discussion about information and misinformation? Could it be part of the marketing campaign? Could it be seen as a political hot button? Uh, I have no question in my mind that libraries are at the forefront of that particular issue. And just look at the ALA or any, any national or state organization. 
but I'd like to hear from others because yes, there are political nuances that might be locally based. Anyone else have a comment? It's a great question, Juan. Um, we do it says we created an autism awareness resource web page earlier this year to tie in with Autism Awareness Month, including our sensory friendly story time. One of our commissioners sponsored a resolution declaring April Autism Awareness Month in our county. The web page tied in with the month. A poster promoting the library's web page was included in an exhibit at County Hall. Great cross promotion. Yes, exactly. That's a comprehensive approach. You've identified a need, a concern in your community, autism, and you're addressing it across multiple platforms and in multiple ways, including conversations with county commission and doing a poster and web work and um, highlighting your own services that are related. Good job. And that could be done with almost anything. And we've got another um, comment. Annette says, I know people who are struggling um, to know what's truth and what is fiction. They can't rely on some sources we used to be able to, like the government. This is uh, really a naughty problem. Slightly above, no, I, I don't think it's outside the scope of this course because much of marketing is defining who you are at some very fundamental level and who we are as librarians and libraries is solid authoritative information providers among other things and and unbiased or presenting all sides people i don't know that there is such a thing as unbiased it's central to our very identity as institutions so it's very very important and um right now it's difficult i'd i'd like to hear from others on this if we have time and we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, so while you guys are, are typing and thinking about what you're going to say, um, if, if there is more than one of you sitting at a computer watching this webinar, um, if you could message me and let us know here at the State Library so that we can um, add that to our statistics. OK, I'm glad that you, you've all brought up some really interesting and important points. Um, particularly appreciate the, the whole issue of information reliability and uh, breadth of information and who we are as librarians. And I think we must never lose sight of that, whether we actually say it or not. If you say it too much, people will roll their eyes. But if you do it, people will notice ultimately you are the place to go for real information, real news. Um, one more part of this, um, which is the quick overview of uh, research and target audiences. And this is a big subject. So I, I'd ask you to watch this first video on the second section, which is about um, marketing research, the information that's available, how to segment your audience, um, and how to write messages. It's really... Um, not that complicated. People talk about mess message crafting, and in any political campaign, there's a huge uh, amount of conversation about this. But let's say you want to target your elders in your community, that people over 65 could use more of your services, both online and in the building. So the best way to think about crafting a message about what the library has is not to list all the things you think they could use, but is to visualize an individual elderly person who you know and talk to them or visualize an imaginary elderly person and talk to them as so that they'll understand, figure out what it is, think about it hard. What is your grandmother especially interested in right now? What would hook her to come in the library or have that first attempt at going online and finding an audio book instead of having to juggle CDs. If you're interested in drawing in a particular ethnic group, 
make sure you know somebody, an actual person who's a representative of that group and, and talk with them. Or better yet, have someone on your staff who can, can, um, can embed themselves in that culture and, and feel what the needs are and create. It's not that it, everybody can use our services. We know that. But how you say it, what's important? What's the faculty? What's the faculty at your university going to relate to? Fewer Google, Google term papers is a pretty good message. Um, we teach your students how to use, infra, how to use uh, online databases. It may not be all that interesting to them. It may not hook them in the same way. So really think about this. Use the grandma filter, says Brianna. Yeah, there are other tips and tricks. I really urge you. Now, in the service called Demographics Now, which is available through the Florida Electronic Library, there is a service called Mosaic, which some people call psychographics. But each demographic area is given a name, and it does a sort of personality type around that name or set of interests and concerns. And this makes it a lot easier to craft messages to that particular group. I am, I urge you, I urged you here, but I'm going to make this homework before the next, the next session, which is four weeks from now. I'd like all of you to spend serious time with Demographics Now from the Florida Electronic Library. Get in touch with Brendan, I think, if you have trouble getting to it. Um, we'll provide you with a couple of guides on how to use it, although it's, it's uh, playing around with it, it's not difficult, but it's incredibly valuable. It's not just census data, it goes a little farther. That's what's good about it. And I want you to really think about the demographics in your user area. Now, you academic librarians can not do this, research, this but I would like you to think really hard about one or two demographic groups within your campus community who have to be um, targeted really carefully. Faculty, of course, comes to mind. There may be others. So is that uh, clear? Because I'd really like you to identify a mosaic group and write a message for them about why, they, why the library is good for them, why the library can change their life. Assume everybody's madly going to do this. We will follow up with an email to fully clarify and make sure that this happens. The other thing I'd like you to do, besides watching the rest of the videos and working through the workbook, as you work through it, as I say, there's a lot of material here. Um, notice what interests you the most. Uh, I'd like to hear about that. Also, Focus especially on the word of mouth marketing session. So I believe that that's another kind of foundational and not high resource suck, uh, method of marketing that's important for libraries in particular. That's uh, video number 3.1. So you have two tasks. Focus on demographics now, mosaic. Learn to use demographics now and then really get into the mosaic part for your demographic. That's for public libraries. For academic libraries, figure out some target audiences and learn about them and write a message. The other thing is uh, focus extra on video 3.1 and the workbook attendant material. Any questions, concerns, total confusion, joys, insights? <laughs> Sandy, thank you. <laughs> and Leela. I am happy to receive emails from any of you in between times. 
um, if you bump up against a question or you have a sudden insight too, it'd be fun to share that with the group. Drop me a quick note. I won't correct your grammar or spelling. Barbara, thanks for the comment on the flipped classroom. Um, this is new for a lot of us, kind of fun, but it takes there's a bit of a learning curve. Okay, I can't leave. I got two more minutes, so I have to tell you, focus, focus, focus on your internal library culture. Really examine it and think about it. It may be perfect or great. Uh, and if it is, tell your staff. Tell your staff this is really important and I'm glad we're so great. And if it's not great, which is possible, um, think about ways in which you can encourage staff to be more knowledgeable, more enthusiastic. You're all fabulous, doing good work. Incredibly important institutions. We need to remember that. Well, thanks, Lawrence. We'll stay on for a few more minutes to make sure we get all the questions answered. But um, for those of you that have um, things to do and you've got to you've got to get going, um, thanks for being on, and we will see you next month. Lawrence, are you still on? I am. Okay, great. Um, so Brendan and I were just talking. Um, if we give you the list of people that attended and were registered, would you be able to send out, um, and, and we can give you some text, but to send out a follow-up message? We're yes. Just, um, 